Tired of the everyday grind? Ever dream of a life of romantic adventure? Want to get away from it all? We offer you Escape. Escape, designed to free you from the four walls of today for a half hour of high adventure. You are in your house, surrounded by all that is secure and normal, while outside... Your children are playing a new and wonderful game. Well, thanks. Thanks a lot. Hello? Hello, Mary. How are things in New York? Oh, Helen, how nice. Are you in town? No, I'm in Danbury. I was just thinking of you. Thought I'd call. It's long distance, though. You shouldn't. Oh, I can afford three minutes. How's Henry? Oh, fine. And Bill? Oh, just fine. Oh, what about me? Oh, wonderful. Noisier than ever. She's got a new game now. It's taken the place of hopscotch. Invasion. Is she playing that, too? Oh, well, yes. Are yours? Same thing. Some kind of geometric jacks, I suppose. <laughs> Isn't it a scream? All the kids their age are playing it up here. Timmy's got a crush on some guy named uh, Drill. I think that's what it is. Well, it, it must be a new password. Mine likes him, too. I didn't know it got to New York. Word of mouth, I suppose. You know kids. Funniest thing, I got a letter from my sister in Boston. She says her kids are playing it, too. It's sweeping the country. I wonder where they learned it. Don't ask me. All I know is what Timmy told me at lunch. Zero hours at five o'clock. When? Today. That's when the invasion's going to be. These kids and their imaginations. And they talked a little more. Schoolgirl friends. Casual woman talk. But Mrs. Morris was thoughtful. She was thinking of other things. Of adults. Of children under nine with imagination. Rose bushes. Dimensions. She thought of how much she had forgotten about being a child. And she wondered about Mink. And all the kids who at that moment were playing Invasion. Oh, no. Not if I know Fred. I'm so glad you called. Give my love to Henry. And a kiss for Mink. I will. And to Bill and the kids. Thanks, dear. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> An hour drowsed by. It was three o'clock. There was an occasional hum inside the coolness of the house as a car passed outside. The street was lined with good green and peaceful trees. And all across the city, in other gardens and other places, children under nine were excitedly playing a game, talking to rose bushes and grass lawns, trees and shrubs. Even children in apartment houses high in the air, conferring with potted plants. Cactus and ivy. Mrs. Morris finished the vacuuming and went to the kitchen. Oh, hello, dear. Hi, Mom. Can I have a glass of water? Oh, of course. I'll get it. Hi, R squared. 47. A over 56 to the seventh degree. X, G, 7. Hmm? What, dear? Oh, nothing, Mom. Well, here you are. Thanks. How are things going? Hmm? The invasion. Oh, that. Yes, that. Almost finished. When everything's right, Drill said we should be ready on time. Five o'clock. That's right. How did you know? Well, Helen called me from Danbury. She says Timmy's playing it, too. Hey, that's keen. I guess all the kids are, aren't they? Mm, no, not all of them. That guys like Pete Britz and Dale Jarrett. They're growing up. They make fun of us. They're even worse than parents. They just won't believe in Drill. They're so smart just because they're growing up. You'd think they know better. They were little only a couple of years ago. Well, we're going to get rid of them first. 
Drill says it's okay to kill them first. Now, wait a minute. I don't like that kind of talk, Mink. Do you hear me? I don't like it at all. Oh, Ma. No, I mean it. You keep on that way and there's no more playing. You'll have to tell Anna to go home and you'll stay inside until bedtime. I'm sorry. Well, I should think so. Thanks for the wire, Mom. Mink. Uh-huh. What do those numbers mean? What numbers? Those numbers you were saying to yourself before. Oh, that? Well, they're the things that we have to do to get Drill and his friends out. That's all. Look, dear, oh, why don't you and Anna go down to the drugstore and get some ice cream, huh? You don't have to use your allowance. I'll pay for it. Haven't got time, Mom. Well, I'd never believe I'd hear you say that. I gotta go now, Mom. Oh, wait a minute. Um, uh, Mink, I... I want you to tell me the truth. What is this? Invasion, silliness. It isn't, silly. It's... Well, it's just a game. That's all. We're just playing at invasion. Excuse me, I gotta get back now. I'll see you later. <laughs> We will return to escape in just a moment, but first, this is Fire Prevention Week, proclaimed by the President and supported by all responsible businesses and individuals. Fires start, on the average, at the rate of one every 20 seconds somewhere in America. Through them, 11,000 lives a year and hundreds of millions of dollars in property are lost. Clean out burnables, eliminate frayed wires, and all other hazards. Don't give fire the place to start, in your home or business. And now, back to Escape. It was a game called Invasion. Mrs. Morris's little girl, Mink, was playing it. So was Mink's friend, Anna, and all the other children under nine. It was called Invasion, and zero hour was to be at five o'clock. Mrs. Morris was disturbed. She wasn't sure why, but there was something, something about parents shutting ears and eyes to what was happening. And because she was disturbed, she did something she didn't usually do. She called her husband at the office. Hello, dear. Oh, hello, Henry. I, uh, I'm sorry to bother you, but Miss Maxson said you weren't busy. Oh, not too. I should be able to get home early today. Everything all right? Yes. You all right? Uh, I'm fine. Think? Well, she's... Uh, Henry. What, dear? Oh, oh, nothing. I just wanted to talk to you for a minute. That's all. <laughs> Listen, uh, you sure you're all right? Oh, yes. Mink been getting on your nerves? Not really. Well, now, you tell her to behave. When I come home, she and I are going to have a talk. Matter of fact, she's been a little fresh lately. I don't think it's good for her to... Well, she's playing outside. She, she's fine. Honey, is something wrong? Well, no, I told you. I, I was thinking about you and wanted to talk. That's all. Nothing wrong with that. Not a thing. Well, you go back to your work, dear. I'll see you soon. All right. What time do you think you'll be home? About five. Maybe a little earlier. Five. Oh. Hey. What? Come on. What? Well, I was just thinking. <laughs> Nothing, really. Just Mink and you and me. Good thoughts. <laughs> Goodbye, dear. So long. You, uh... You are okay, aren't you? Oh, I'm fine. Goodbye. Bye. Another hour passed, and it was half past four. The day began to wane. The sun lowered in the peaceful blue sky. Shadows lengthened on the green lawn. Outside, it was quiet. The two little girls more intent than ever upon their endless movement of design and pattern with the implements before them. 
Mrs. Norris watched from the window, and she had never known Mink to have such powers of concentration. She had switched on the radio and sat drinking a cup of coffee and turned over her thoughts. Children, children. <laughs> children love and hate side by side. Sometimes children love you and hate you all in half a second. Strange children. Do they ever forget or forgive the whippings and the harsh, strict words of command? Hmm. I wonder, I wonder. How can you forget or forgive those over and above you? Those tall, silly dictators. Those parents. Mom! Oh, what is it, dear? Have we got a piece of lead pipe and a hammer? Well, I don't know. They might be in the garage. What do you want them for? Oh, we just need them. Well, if you tell me, I can find them. I can get them. Thanks, Mom. Is something wrong? Just that halfway. If we could get them all the way through, it'd be easier. And all the others could come through after them. Well, can I help? Thanks, Mom. I can fix it. You better get through, Mink. I want you to take your bath before your father comes home. All right. He's coming home early. And Mink... Mink! Mink had disappeared behind the shrubs, and Mrs. Morris knew it was ridiculous to make an issue of it. Besides, what was the issue? Invasion? Drill? Zero hour? Unaccountably, a cool breeze came up, and although normally for that time of year it would have been a relief, Mrs. Morris felt a chill... She closed the window. Time passed. A curious waiting silence came upon the street, deepening. Then from the living room, Mrs. Morris heard... Five o'clock, zero hour, zero hour. It had come, and now it had gone. But was the clock right? And Mrs. Morris, knowing how foolish it was, knowing it, went to the phone and dialed. Silly, silly. When you hear the tone, the time will be exactly 4, 54, and 20 seconds. Four fifty-four and 20 seconds. And Mrs. Morris knew that it wasn't as silly as she had thought. Because it wasn't 5 o'clock yet. Not zero hour yet. Then the car drove up into the driveway. Hi, Mink. How's it going? Hi, Anna. Hi, Daddy. Hi, Mark. Hey, you got a kiss for your old man? I haven't got time now, Daddy. Well, that's a nice thing. What are you doing? We're playing invasion. Oh, swell. Mother and Alice? Yes. Okay. Be good. I will. Zero hour in a few minutes, Daddy. All right. I'll be ready. Mrs. Morris heard him chuckle and his steps up the walk to the front door. Mary! Oh, I'm in the living room, dear. Oh. Hi. Our daughter didn't have time for a kiss. How about you? <laughs> Hard day? Oh, not particularly. Would you like a cocktail? You read my mind. Martini? Perfect. Anything exciting happen today? No. Oh, Helen called. Oh? From Danbury. I told her she was crazy, but she just felt like calling. Like you calling me this afternoon. Crazy, huh? Oh, what was that all about? Well, I told you I wanted to. Uh, hey, uh, incidentally, uh, what's this new game the kids are playing? Zero Hour Invasion. That's a nice, depressing thought. Oh, I don't know. Something silly. They're, they're all playing it these days. 
Here. Thanks. Oh, you make the best martinis in the world. I'm glad you think so. And there's been a beautiful day. You know, I kept looking out the window wishing I was anywhere but in that office. What's the time, Henry? A couple of minutes after five. Why? No, no, the clock's wrong. By your watch. Hmm? Oh, uh, well, I've got two minutes, too. I'm probably slow. You got something on the stove? No, I... I just wondered. Honey. Hey, look at me. What's the matter? Well, n nothing, really. No. no, really. Mink been up to something? Of course not. Then what? Well, I... I guess I'm a little tired. Upset, That that's all. You want to go out for dinner? Oh, no, no. I got a steak here. Well, I tell you what. I'll barbecue it. How'd that be? Oh, fine. What was that? What? I, I thought I heard something. Well, I didn't. I, I must have been imagining it. Hey, you are jumpy. Why don't you have a drink? Do you good? No, I don't want one. What's the time? Mary, what is this? Oh, I mean it. Something's wrong. Now I want to know. It's silly. It, it's so silly. I, I'm on edge. That's Mary? All. I am. I don't like it. That kid's done something, hasn't she? I'm going to get her in Oh, here. no, no, Henry, please don't. don't. She, she hasn't. It, it, it's nothing at all. I, I just... What's that? I... I don't know. Well, those kids haven't got anything dangerous out there, have they? I noticed a lot of junk lying around. Oh, no. N nothing dangerous. Just things, you know. Nothing electrical? Well, no, I, I'm sure not. Oh. What the devil? <laughs> Maybe you better go out and tell them to stop playing now. It, it's after five. You tell me to put off the invasion until tomorrow. <laughs> tell them... Well, coming from outside. So what are they up to? I'd better take a look. Mink! Mink! Good Lord! Ah! Oh! They're falling! Oh, no! No, it's... it's upstairs. I know it is. In the attic. That's where it is. Mary! Mary! Mary, it's not upstairs! Mary! He ran after her, confused, frightened. She seemed to know something. In the attic. That's where it is. Her mind had worked that quickly. Any excuse to get him away from the outside, to get him upstairs to the attic in time. And outside, there were more explosions, and they could hear the children screaming with delight. He's not in the attic. He's outside. Mink's out there. What's the matter with you? No, Mary? no. I'll show you. Hurry! Get inside quick. Now, we're safe until tonight. Mary. Maybe we can sneak out later. Maybe we can escape. Are you crazy? Why'd you throw the key away? For heaven's sake, the kid's out there. Do you want to... Oh, you don't know. You don't. We've got to stay here. We've got to. It's horrible. We've got to. You've got to stay here with me. Well, at this point, I don't know how the devil I can get out. Where's that light cord? Be quiet, please. But... Be quiet. They'll hear us. They'll find us. Oh, Henry, please. Uh, who's going to answer them? There's that noise again. It's in this house. <gasps> Mary, what is it? <gasps> Mary, what's happening? You know, now answer me. <gasps> Stop that, Mary. Somebody's downstairs. <gasps> who's down there? <gasps> oh, no, 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 <gasps> no, 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 And between his wife's terror and the electric humming from below, Mr. Morris felt a great fear. They trembled together in silence in the attic, Mr. and Mrs. Morris, parents of a little girl. Then they heard steps coming up the stairs and a voice. Mom! Dad! Where are you? And a queer, cold light became visible under the door crack a strange odor, and the alien sound of eagerness in Mink's voice was almost more than they could bear. Each wanted to scream. Mom! Dad! 
and another sound. And the attic door lock melted. Mink. Mink, with bright little eyes and tousled hair, peered inside. And behind her, tall, wavering blue shadows. Frightful shadows. Bradbury. Direction and adaptation of the story were by Anthony Ellis. Tonight, you heard Paula Winslow as Mrs. Morris and Issa Ashdown as Mink, with John Daner as the narrator. Featured in the cast were Eve McVeigh, Bill Johnstone, and Mary McGovern. The special music for Escape was composed and conducted by Leith Stevens. Next week... You are together in a room... You and the one you love. The objects of an experiment. While the man who has dared you to undergo his test is waiting for the moment when you break and in your defeat find that there is no escape. So listen next week when Escape will bring you Stephen Vincent Benet's unusual story, Elementals. <laughs> has seldom had it so good. Starting this Monday night, Vaughn Monroe joins forces with the famous Sauter Finnegan Orchestra, and Sally Sweetland adds her feminine vocalizing to the Monday Night Caravan on CBS Radio. You'll make it a listening habit every week once you've heard the Monday Night Caravan featuring the songs of Vaughn Monroe, the remarkable musical approach of the Sauter Finnegan Organization, and the vocals of Sally Sweetland. Remember, premiere tomorrow night on most of these same stars' address stations. This is Roy Rowan speaking. Preceding program was transcribed. Suspense is heard Monday evenings on the CBS radio network.